Good morning. Really honestly, during this pandemic, uh, it is really good to see you almost more every Sunday. <laughs> it is good to see human beings, especially ones that we love and, and we know. Uh, a couple of announcements before we uh, begin. One is uh, we're trying to uh, improve our online experience uh, 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 with the worship service. So if you have the recording of this later on, we just want everyone to know that the bulletin is being posted at the website online so that if you're at home, you can uh, download or, or, or whatever, get that copy of the bulletin so you can follow along with the service better uh, as, we, as we do that. Uh, I believe the communicator's on the website now too. So we're trying to get a little bit better with all these things we're doing. And please remember too that uh, if you don't uh, have email address or contact for the prayer chain, you can contact me directly by email or phone or text uh, and let me know any prayer requests uh, that you have too so that we can be uh, praying uh, uh, with you on those. Uh, it's interesting, and I thank God for this. This is going to sound bad, but uh, the only hospital visits I've, I've really I been able to do, really, is when I went to the hospital, <laughs> and now my wife, because they don't allow us, but uh, uh, she was getting a lot of symptoms that sounded like COVID, so I, I, uh, I asked her to, to contact the hospital. They said, come right in. The good news is this, is she does not have COVID. She's got an infection uh, in a couple of different infections that are pretty serious. They said if she would have waited till Monday, we could have been in uh, big trouble. The good news is they get, they're treating her and she seemed like she's already feeling a little bit better. But please let me know, uh, phone call, text, email uh, of any prayer requests or needs that you have, and if I can, uh, visit. Uh, I, I certainly will. So, uh, this morning we're going to continue our, our series on the Lord's Prayer, which is uh, quickly coming to a close because we're coming to the end of the prayer. This uh, morning we're going to look at and lead us not into temptation. But before we get there, we begin our, our, our worship service uh, with uh, uh, the Psalm 138, which is printed in your bulletin. And I invite you to please uh, take your bullets and stand with me as we begin with the word of God. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. On the day I called, you answered me. My strength of soul, you increased. All the of the earth shall give you thanks, O Lord, And they shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand delivers me. Please remain standing for our, our next hymn. i 
please remain standing, and if you would turn with me to page 184. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, our maker and redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on his name, he gives power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. The Lord be with you. And let us pray. Father, we give you praise and thanksgiving again for all that you've done for us, for your, your goodness, your love, 
that you work all things together for our good as we are called according to your purposes. So, Father, we pray, pour out your spirit again upon us so that we can receive your word and your teachings through Jesus Christ, we pray. And please be seated. Our first reading is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 51. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness, who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, that I might bless him and multiply him. For the Lord comforts Zion. He comforts all her waste places and makes her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Give attention to me, my people, and give ear to me, my nation, for a law will go out from me, and I will set my justice for a light to the peoples. My righteousness draws near, my salvation has gone out, and my arms will judge the peoples. The coastlands hope for me, and for my arm they wait. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look at the earth beneath, for the heavens vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment, and they who dwell in it will die in like manner. But my salvation will be forever, and my righteousness will never be dismayed. This is the word of the Lord. And our next reading is from Romans chapter 11 and chapter 12. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor or who has given a gift to him that he might be repaid? For from him and through him and to him are all things, to him be glory forever. Amen. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not have all the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Let us use them, if prophecy, in proportion to our faith, if service, in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness, this is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew beginning with the 16th chapter. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. 
He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly charged the disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. This is the gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds. Of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men, and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And please remain standing for our next song, which is uh, printed on the insert.
Please be seated. So, we're going to look this morning at uh, Lead Us Not Into Temptation. Uh, Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. In um, Matthew and Luke, it's recorded before the Lord's Prayer comes along. And that should cause some questions to us. Why would the Holy Spirit lead Jesus as our representative, uh, the perfect man, into the wilderness uh, to be tempted by the devil? And I hope you're not disappointed that I'm going, not going to tackle that this morning with you, but uh, it reminds me of Job, because what happened is Job, in God's eyes, wasn't doing anything wrong. And all of a sudden, Satan comes around, and he's given permission to uh, basically attack him under God's permission. And uh, Job uh, is not very happy with that, as you can imagine. And God's answer to him when he starts questioning God is, where were you when the foundations of the world and the universe were created and so on? In other words, God doesn't really answer the question. He just says, well, he wouldn't use these exact words, sorry, but he just says, you're really too dumb to be able to figure this one out anyway. So just let it go and trust that God has all wisdom. So Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And I believe my hunch is, is that that affected the prayer that he gave us to pray. That was not a good, enjoyable experience to be in the very presence of this dark, horrible creature who rebelled against God. You remember Jesus at the cross, he uh, he, 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 he actually felt depressed, if you will, even unto death is the words that there in the Bible. You don't want this. So there are different uh, uh, experiences you can have as far as leading into temptation. And just to let you know this word, temptation in English kind of has a, I kind of trivialize it in English, you know. Like, my wife made some brownies with nuts in them. I saw them out, and they kept on staring at me every day. And to fi I finally yield to the temptation, which I am not supposed to do as a diabetic, and I started eating those. That's pretty trivial compared to the word in the Greek. That can be part of it. I mean, it's stupid to destroy your health by doing something that tempts you, that is uh, self-destructive. But this is much bigger, really, when you start doing what we call a word study in the Bible. And what you can do is, you can, any one of us can do that with computers now, internet websites. They come up with a Strong's number, and a science of that shows you everywhere that this Greek word or Hebrew word uh, is used in the Bible. And then in the context, which I did to look at this, uh, you find out that it's one of the strongest interpretations in Greek kind of literature is it's like an experiment. It's like you're making a bridge. Will this bridge pass the test? Is it strong enough to have semis? I mean, to go over it. So it's an experiment to see if the bridge will break or not. So that's the kind of thing it's... Uh, what Satan would like to do is bring hard, difficult trials into our lives that break us, that snap us in two. Well, Martin Luther talks about this one in the small catechism. It's always worthwhile to look into there to get some help. And he says, God surely uh, tempts no one to sin. And that's the main point. He doesn't tempt us to sin. He's got good intentions towards us. But we pray in this petition that God would guard and keep us so that the devil, the world, and our flesh may not deceive us or lead us into false belief, despair, and other great and shameful sins. And though we are tempted by them, we pray that we may overcome and win the victory. 
And uh, next week, Lord willing, we're all together and we look at it and lead us and, and deliver us from evil or the evil one. We can look into that a little more deeply. But some trials, hard times, difficult experiences do not come from the hand of God. They come from, well, we would say hell. Uh, in both Matthew and Luke, Luke, Jesus is led by the Holy Spirit to the one who will be in the lake of fire for all eternity when the final judgment comes. And there's a contrast between how God leads us. You know, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want, which means I shall lack nothing. And, and he goes on, he leads me beside still waters and, and so on. But Jesus talks about the other side in John chapter 10. when He says that he is our good shepherd that is leading us. Jesus says, I am the door. And I like to think I am the gateway to heaven in paradise. If anyone enters by me, Jesus says, he will be saved and will go in and find out and find pasture. Psalm 23. But he says, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. So we pray in this that we will not be influenced by the power of Satan and the dark powers of darkness, the, that they have their way to destroy us and lead us into dark, difficult times, hard times that will break us. That's one of the things we pray for. But there are also consequences of sin, of the fall, of our and, and it didn't just start with us, you know. We might look at this a little bit next week, but it started with the devil. It started with the dark one who led Adam and Eve astray. I mean, there was a rebellion before there was a rebellion of Adam and Eve. And there were consequences that in that temptation, Adam and Eve failed. Death, sickness, old age, demonic powers of evil having access to this world that they didn't before. All the bad things you see, those are for the consequences of the fall. And uh, there are certain things that we go through difficult times. Uh, I, I had so many shut-ins tell me so long, you know, it's not fun, the golden years. It's, it's not the, the, a beautiful thing to, to, to become old. There's a lot of things that go along with that. Those are consequences of the fall. But a third thing is what I'm going to call coaching from the Heavenly Father. I say that a little bit with a quote because this coaching is really tough. It can be at times. It's all his intentions are good. I've been kind of following, but not that much. I'm kind of interested in some football teams coming up. I just let you know, Tampa Bay Bucks with, uh, with uh, Tom Brady going over there. A little bit still with Cleveland, although they've kind of lost their shine. Uh, Cincinnati with, with their new quarterback. Uh, but if you're going to be a professional athlete, your coach is going to drive you right to the limit to be the very best you can be. So we have to realize we don't have an easy coach all the time, even though he's our Heavenly Father that has our best at stake. Deuteronomy 8.5 talks about, Know then in your heart, and Deuteronomy 8 is a big chapter, that as a man disciplines his son, the Lord your God disciplines you. I was the youngest uh, in the family, the only son. And just to be blunt with you, I was a bit spoiled. And once I became a Christian, I started experiencing God's discipline in my life. Sometimes we get to the point where we start saying, I, I don't know if I really signed up for this. 
and you find out he does discipline us for our own good, which maybe our parents didn't. Sometimes we as parents, we just feel loving and we feel kind of soft. We don't want to have to carry out discipline. God does. I, I'm not trying to limit his love. I'm not trying to limit, it, uh, uh, limit his goodness. But what I learned as a child of God that he didn't just let things go. He was like a coach that wanted to make the very best he ever could of you. And he, he will use difficult, hard times and trials. And that's where in the scripture says, whenever you experience trials of many kinds, by the way, James, there where that, where that scripture comes from, it's like a machine gun with all the use of this word in the Greek, testing, temptation, and everything else. Whenever you experience trials of many, you know, count it all joy because you know that he is working all of this for our good. Uh, that, that beautiful passage in Romans 8, you know, all things work together for the good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And really, that verse is what we're kind of saying, even what we're going through the hard and difficult times. And you have to realize, admit with me that these are pretty difficult times that we have in our world, uh, our society, all these different things. Uh, but God is there. He is there to be with us. He is there, and he can make our faith stronger. He can make our joy stronger. He can make our love, all of these things stronger in spite of all that's going on around us. Hebrews 12 picks up this Deuteronomy 8 passage, this truth, and he says, For the Lord disciplines the one he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. Over in verse 10, it says, For they discipline, pointing to our parents, for a short time does it seem best to them, but he disciplines us for our good, that we may share in his holiness. And we take that on that it's worth, because he's disciplining us for our good, any difficulty, trials, and hard times we go through, that we may share in his holiness holiness. It's all worthwhile. So we're called to endure. And uh, well, I want to just walk you through the end of Revelation. Revelation is a fantastically interesting book. And you start seeing a uh, well, it seems like the forces of evil, Satan, the great dragon, it goes on. and seems like they're getting their way. They're kind of starting to win. It's some very dark chapters in there. I had, <laughs> and I didn't mean to do that, but I remember my daughter and, and my son, they used to read through the book of Revelation later together uh, after I read through it some too. And I don't know, maybe there should be some uh, age level recommendations on when you start reading the book of Revelation to small kids. And my, my, my daughter would have some nightmares about that. Yet she would just keep on going. She wanted to read a book of Revelation and everything. I just went through the book again. And uh, it has got a very dark portion to it. But what God is trying to say, even though it might look like they're starting to win and that the whole world is falling apart, and everything is going wrong. God is coming in. He will judge. He will bring his righteousness in. This is not the end of the story. And what we're called on to is endure. One of those confirmation verses going way back in the first chapters of be faithful unto death. And that's what we're called to do because death has a whole different, uh, uh, no sting to us anymore. I mean, the sting of death I know it says in the Bible, sin, but it's also separation. Uh, I know a couple of you, I, I had to deal yesterday a little bit with, which I never really did in reality, is we both might be going through this trial of COVID. That's why they asked, she call, I said, can you call up the hospital? Because she kind of canceled an appointment. And she said, well, I called them up and they said they want me to come in immediately because of the symptoms that I have. And we had to start going through the scenario. Uh, this could be our going through this virus. 
And we don't know how it's going to affect people. Some people have died from it. Some people have hardly had symptoms. A lot of people have really struggled horribly through it. And when you look at that, and I, I'm totally honest with you, for my sake, I've, I've been in surgeries and different things. I mean, without our Lord with me and our medical system that we've had over the years, I probably would have been dead at 45 years old. I've had several times, actually, uh, when I wasn't supposed to survive through something. So it's just me. There's something beautiful about going under anesthesia. You've had all the time in the world to go over the gospel, make your peace fresh with God, experience the peace of God that passes all understanding. And, uh, and then they start having you count backwards. I think from 100, kind of hard to remember because you don't get very far. 199 and the worst thing that can happen is I go to sleep and I wake up in paradise with God forever obviously that's not bad but just like the apostle Paul we, we, we go through I don't know what I would choose of course I'd choose to be with the Lord <laughs> I didn't share with this one so when Penny I thought she might have COVID I told her I said I want to really hug you and get really close to you and everything else. Says, you're not going to die before I do. You see, what really hurts is when you're separated. That's what really bothers you. Uh, but God has this beautiful promise at the end of Revelation that we're going to have eternal life. Uh, uh, dark chapters, and then it comes to Revelation 21 and 22, and I just want to read uh, to this, this to you, because it's talking about you and me having been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ with the forgiveness of our sins, given the gift of eternal life, and this is the end of the story. It says, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And that's the ultimate. That's what we're heading for. That's why we endure that's what we have to look forward to. And God himself will be with them as their God. Verse 4, chapter 21, And he will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall be any mourning or crying, nor pain any more. For the former things have passed away, and he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. And he said, Write this down, for the words are trustworthy and true. So Jesus teaches us to pray, uh, and lead us not into temptation to anything that would separate us from the love of God and from our salvation, anything that would draw us away from our mission and our purpose in life, anything from that task, we pray that he would not lead us into temptation, but that he would lead us as the good shepherd, the great shepherd of the sheep. So, Father, we, we close this message, and we do pray, and lead us not into temptation, into anything that would break us. Father, by our human nature. We don't even want to ask for anything hard. But Lord, we pray that you would use anything in our lives, even difficult things, to make us stronger, closer to you forever. And Lord, help us to count it pure joy when you bring something that is for our good and our improvement as our Heavenly Father, and then you discipline us. 
But Lord, we pray that you would protect us from all evil sources, hardships that would come from the dark side and lead us to our heavenly home forever. In Jesus' name, amen. We now sing, Created Me a Clean Heart on page 192. Heavenly Father, again, we, we humble ourselves before you, and we admit that your ways are too profound, too complex for us to understand, and, and we, by faith, as Job did, we, we stop to praise you. And Lord, we don't even uh, dare to challenge you, put you to the test on your goodness, but we accept that you are good, that you are faithful, that you are our heavenly Father, that you love us, and that you deliver us from evil, and you lead us in the perfect ways. So, Father, we praise you, and Lord, we want to bring before you uh, those in our congregation who are shut in or, or who just haven't been with us for a while especially from this list we have. We pray for Ed and Phyllis, Ruth, for Shelley, for Dave and Arlette, Wayne and Gail, Helen and Mindy, Jean, Karen, Ed and Mosery, Ed and Rosemary, Herman and Ruth, Norv, Rita and Pam, Charlotte, Barbara and Tracy, Phyllis, Gary, and Marion. And Lord, we also pray for your healing for Eli and Maria. Lord, keep your wonderful hand and presence over Maria and provide all that she needs, Lord. We pray for our nation. We come close to an election, Lord. We pray that you will give us biblical values in our hearts and minds, especially I pray for myself as a pastor. And help us. Uh, well, I ask uh, not that you, you make us political because whatever political party or whatever candidate is out there, they are frail human beings just like us all. But Lord, your values stand forever, your righteousness. And Father, we pray that you'll help from your pulpits across our nation uh, bring your righteous values so that we can all consider them. And then you would lead us in the, the vote in our nation. And most of all, Father, we pray that you would preserve us as a, a nation that has freedom and love for you and your laws. Father, we pray that your righteousness would prevail through all of our governmental agencies and people. Lord, that you would eliminate those who are crooks and liars. And Father, that you would elevate those to have a fear of you and have a desire and accountability to you. Lord, we pray that you would preserve us as a nation and we, and we see also the devastation that this uh, pandemic has brought upon our nation. We pray for our economy, our farms, our jobs, all of those things, Lord. And Father, we pray that you would bring healing and a solution to this virus. Lord, we look forward to the day when we can be encouraged to shake each other's hands and hug one another. 
be able to go out and enjoy ourselves without having to have masks. Lord, we pray for your healing upon us and our society and your forgiveness upon us as a nation and a world that we have far too often wandered away from your kingdom righteousness. So, Father, you know that all of our hearts, Lord, where there is fear, I pray that you would put hope and joy. And, Lord, help us to remember that you are our shepherd, that we shall lack nothing, that you will lead us and guide us in, in, in green pastures by still waters, and that we shall dwell in your house forever. Lord, we thank you and praise you. So, Father, we ask these and, and many other things that we pour out before you from our hearts and our loved ones. In the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Please stand for the benediction and our closing hymn. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.
I invite you please to be seated and wait for the ushers to uh, usher you out. 